What's going on guys? So CES just wrapped up in Las Vegas and there are many things to talk about. A lot in the mobile space, the TV space, the general home labbing space. Mini PCs and NASA should be fun to talk about, but we gotta talk about why AMD decided to showcase a huge server rack instead of desktop chips, but it might make more sense than what you think. But you know what doesn't make sense on this channel? Our sponsor, Nobody. If you want to know about what chip you should purchase, go to uh, this timestamp here because I assume you're in a rush. I just ask for you to subscribe and leave a like. But I want to talk about Intel in this video because I have worked with Intel in the past during their slight decline. And it seems like things are starting to turn around for Intel. Obviously, stock is not indicative of whether a company is truly performing good or not, but you can see that there has been a dip within like the past five years of Intel and things are starting to bounce back up. So we got to talk about Panther Lake. Now, whenever I've talked to partners with Intel these past few years, you could tell that Intel was not delivering in some capacity. They were delivering in some categories, but it seems like they were always falling short of what these partners wanted. But this time around, when I went to CES, across the board, everyone is happy and excited about Intel. And that kind of leaves me excited about Intel. And I can kind of detect when there's like BS in the room and people are just happy for the sake of just marketing purposes. But with Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake essentially having a baby, and from what their claims of what Intel is saying this time around in both efficiency and performance with a name I still don't really understand, the Intel Core Ultra Series 3 codename Panther Lake is starting to be a chip that we need to look out for in 2026. If you look at this chart that Intel showcased, you can see that there are a lot of SKUs with multiple Series 9, Series 7, and Series 5 lineups, all of which would have multiple graphics that range from just regular Intel graphics all the way up to the B390 Pro. And the question is, which one of these are for you? Well, to be honest, we need to scrap that entire chart because it's very confusing. As an OEM, it might be useful, but for you and me, not so much. Now, I have to disclose at the time of me making this video, these chips are still under embargo in terms of actual benchmark numbers and whatnot, but given the lineup of laptop companies such as Asus, Lenovo, MSI, Razer, and even Samsung, these Intel chips are going into certain products and these certain products are created with certain target audiences in mind, and that gives you a better idea on what you should buy or what category you fit into. If you skip to this part of this video, I kindly ask that you just bookmark it and share it with people if you do find it useful, but here is what you came for. This is the category that I think a lot of people should buy from, which might shock some tech enthusiasts. But if you are looking for just a laptop, if you're just doing like everyday browsing, you're doing office work, you're probably taking college courses that are basically reading up on papers, opening up PowerPoints, filling out discussion boards, do not look at the H chips and only look at the Ultra 5. And if you see anything with an ARC graphics badge, don't even buy it. You'll be fine with Intel graphics. You don't need art graphics because a lot of the work you're doing is not that demanding when it comes to graphical work. You're just doing like general purpose stuff on a laptop and Intel graphics is going to be fine for most of your use cases. Another thing is if you're going into like Best Buy or any type of these retail stores where they're really just trying to get you to spend a lot of money, do not be wooed over for the fact that these people might say, hey, you might want to get the Ultra 7 or you might want to get this computer with 16 cores instead of 8. Trust me, for your general purpose stuff that you're doing, 8 cores is plenty over 16 cores. You do not need it. I always get this comment in a lot of my videos and people always say that should I upgrade to 16 cores because I have a lot of Chrome tabs open? The short answer is no. And to be honest, the long answer is no. Because basically as a person who has had an infinite amount of tabs from the uh, good old days of Stack Overflow, your 20 tabs will be a cakewalk for the Ultra 5. And I understand for the tech people, it's more about RAM than it is the CPU. But for what you're getting in that laptop, 20 tabs is going to be okay. Spend that extra money on a laptop you think looks nice in this category or just pocket the money instead. Um, the Ultra 5 chip also doesn't turbo. Turbo in the sense of like going up in wattage like the H series chips. From a baseline perspective, they all start off at 25, but with the Ultra 5 series and the non-H series chips, maxes out at 55, which 
I mean, in technical terms, what you guys watching probably don't care, but long story short, you really don't need the Ultra 7 or these H-Series chips. The Ultra 5 is going to be completely fine for you. And lastly, before I move over to the next category, do not let any sales rep try to win you over with 16 cores over eight. Eight is fine. They're probably just trying to get a commission. Now, next up, if you are a developer, you're running multiple Docker containers, maybe running virtual machines, running an entire app locally. And when I say app, I don't mean like those simple web applications that, you know, no disrespect, a lot of people are just vibe coding. I mean like enterprise level applications that may bring your laptop to your knees from all the different microservices you're trying to run. If it's a monolithic application, then you're trying to run that locally on your machine, like you're trying to bring up a database, or at least you're, maybe you're connecting to a database, but you just have all these different services that you need to run on your laptop that is going to be pretty, I don't wanna say intensive, but you need all those extra cores, those extra RAM in order to facilitate that local application or you're probably just crunching a huge Excel document that has all these formulas, this is where I would say the Ultra 7 comes into play. The only thing I wanna say is be careful with the Ultra 7 because this is the biggest section. Um, Intel does give you options, so if you don't plan on gaming or don't need any demanding graphics, just get the Ultra 7 with Intel graphics. Um, there is a X7 series that comes with the Intel Art graphics. I Still trying to figure out what this SKU is gonna be used for, but I think this is really gonna be for people who want a thin and light laptop, but they don't want to elect to go for, you know, pairing it with an RTX uh, 5060, 5070, 5080. I don't think the 5090 is gonna be coming with the Ultra 7, but you just want to not carry around a brick, but you still want to play some level of AAA games, probably not at their highest setting, but you still want to play them. That's where the X7 comes into play and you get so, excuse me, you get those Intel art graphics. That badge is going to be there on those laptops, so be on the lookout for that. But once again, if you don't care about doing any type of like really graphical applications or even like gaming, I would say just get the regular Ultra 7 with an H chip with Intel graphics and you'll be fine. The last group of people are enthusiasts, gamers. And when I say gamers, I mean gamers. Uh, video editors or people that are just willing to pay money for the best of the best because, I don't know, they got trust fund money. So the Ultra 9 is the chip for you, but I would argue still the Ultra 7 is probably gonna be pretty good for you as well. You probably just don't want it to be paired with the Intel Arc series. You want that Intel um, graphics and then pair it with some type of NVIDIA chip on there so you can do some actual LLM local development if that's what you want to do. I suspect most gaming laptops that are going at the top end are going to be paired with the Ultra 9. And this is where your high-end laptops and gaming laptops are going to start coming with. And I don't expect a lot of people to be buying in this category. If you want the best gaming performance in a laptop or the best local AI performance in a laptop or the best whatever Intel has to offer, the Ultra 9 is going to be the chip that you are going to be looking for. Like the flagship laptops that these companies are gonna be, be producing like from Asus, Gigabyte, Lenovo, HP, like the Ultra 9 is going to be in those laptops, trust me. But there really isn't anything else to say in this category because it's just the best performance that you're gonna be able to get from Intel in these laptops and it's going to be paired with some of the best um, graphics from NVIDIA as well because it's just a no compromise chip and it's a no compromise chip because the rest of the Intel stack in terms of the SKU compromises in some way. But I think the Ultra 7 is a good spot for like businesses and people who want to do a little bit more prosumer stuff. But if you just want like an everyday laptop, like I said, the Ultra 5 is gonna be good for you. So that's pretty much it. Um, Intel, if you are watching, once again, from an OEM and partner perspective, the SKU makes a lot of sense, but for consumers who just want a super stupid and easy understanding of what they should buy. This whole Intel Core Ultra 3, Core Ultra 5, like 322 Series 3 Panther Lake 
is a bit confusing and I understand I'm exaggerating a bit, right? When people go and look at the laptops at some retail store, it's just gonna have Ultra 3 with Intel graphics, but just make it simple. The whole series thing, the whole Core Ultra X7, too much. Keep it simple. Anyway, hopefully to get some laptops to showcase to you guys later this year, maybe I'll have an updated guide on the Intel chips once these benchmarks actually come out. If you guys want me to do something similar with the AMD lineup, let me know because AMD has their AI Max chips. Uh, hates compared to Apple, but come on guys, like Intel, you're doing Ultra and then AMD, you're doing Max. It's just making it so confusing for consumers when you guys are just trying to just be unique make up your own and go with it. Look at Apple, Base Pro Max Ultra, simple. That's it. Anyway, not here to praise Apple because, anyway, appreciate everything single sub like and comment. And as always guys, much love, more CES content throughout the week. And as always, I think we're gonna send much love, but happy new year. What's going on guys? So CS CSS. I've worked with Intel in the past during their slight decline. I say slight, but it's been it's been a pretty big decline. But now, whenever I've talked to partners with Intel these past few now whenever now whenever